U.S. President Barack Obama is in Japan, the first stop of his Asia tour. During his stay, Obama commented on the island dispute between China and Japan, telling a Japanese newspaper, quote, disputes need to be resolved through dialogue and diplomacy, not intimidation and coercion. The policy of the United States is clear. The Senkaku Islands are administered by Japan and therefore fall within the scope of Article 5 of the U.S.-Japan Treaty of Mutual Cooperation and Security. And we oppose any unilateral attempts to undermine Japan's administration of these islands. CCTV's Li Chuen joins us live from Beijing with more on China's reaction to Mr. Obama's statement. Chuen. Elaine, Chinese Foreign Ministry made a strong reaction to President Obama's remarks over island dispute. And Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Qin Gang said at a regular press briefing that China firmly opposes U.S. President Barack Obama's remarks on Japan's newspaper Yumi Ori Shinban that the Diaoyu Islands fall within the scope of U.S.-Japan Security Treaty. Take a listen. The U.S. should respect facts, take a responsible attitude and fulfill its commitment on not taking sides on issues related to territorial sovereignty. The U.S. should be discreet in words and deeds to play a constructive role to contribute to regional peace and stability. And Shane also stressed that China's position on the Diaoyu Islands issue is consistent and clear. The Diaoyu Islands have been an integral part of China's territory, and China has indisputable sovereignty over the islands. Back to you, Elaine. And Chi Yuan, what's the Chinese media's reaction to Obama's visit to Japan? Well, Elaine, Chinese state news agency Xinhua published a commentary on its website, and in the article, it urges U.S. government to think carefully before supporting Japan as the Japanese government is trying to amend its constitution in order to lose the restriction over its army. It says, and I quote, as U.S. President Barack Obama will be here soon for a state visit, Tokyo is eager to get his go-ahead signal to lift the country's ban on exercising collective self-defense rights. Washington needs to have a second thought before letting Japan go its own way, though some U.S. politicians have thrown their weight behind Tokyo's move. Given the current regional situation and historical lessons, acquiescence to Japan's military ambition would be dangerous and may turn out contrary to what Washington has expected. Now, the article also warns that the rising of Japanese military backing by the U.S. could treat the peace and stability in the region. The article says, as quoted, without a ban on collective self-defense, a more proactive Japan could literally join the United States and South Korea in a preemptive strike against the DPRK, making the solution of nuclear issues on the Korean Peninsula even more difficult. And as Japan's close ally, the United States should treat a tread rather carefully on the issue. And supporting Japan to lift the ban will endanger regional peace and stability and harm U.S. strategic interest in the long run, Elaine. 